Good evening and good night. This is update for April 9, 2022, day 45 of the war, end of the date update. Uh, in summary, it's a very quiet day in terms of um, any major fighting. Essentially, uh, it's a positional fighting everywhere on the front lines. So if, if anyone is impatient and doesn't want to learn exact uh, front lines, you totally can skip this video. But we will otherwise, for those who want to learn, we will start and we'll discuss, we'll go through the front lines, north to south, and then we're going to go towards west. So let's start with the Kharkiv area and see what's going on there. Here, situation is the same. <clears throat> uh, shelling, exchanging of artillery fire and multiple uh, rocket launchers between Ukrainian defenders and the Russian troops here um, <clears throat> northeast of um, Kharkiv. Um, so next one is uh, on the uh, on, on the topic is Izum situation. So at this point, uh, Russian uh, Russian assault or Russian attempt to exploit this bridgehead totally exhausted itself. What we see, let's actually look here. What we see is that Russian troops are staying in the same area where they were, which is village of Dovhenke and uh, Brashkivka. No progress for several days at this point. And what we're also observing from the videos that they're digging in, in this area, so which tells us that they expanded uh, all of the offensive power of the unit that they have here. And they really need to do something else or, you know, throw more reserves for these units, which, as we discussed before, is unclear where they're going to take them because they don't have readily available reserves. So this situation here may be on pause and there will be much large, like much larger scale of resupply, regrouping, rearranging of Russian troops as a whole that may take up to a month in our estimate. This is obviously an estimate. We're not going to, you know, anything is possible. Maybe the Russian troops will attack tomorrow morning, maybe in two days. But our best guess that it will take a while to resupply because there is simply not enough troops right now to make, um, to achieve the goals that they have. And especially since mm, Russian army got new commander in Ukraine, uh, we'll, uh, if we remember correctly his last name is uh general dvornikov so he's he was just appointed a day or two ago so it would be very strange for the new person to start major offensive if he just was appointed as a commander typically it will take him sometimes to get to know troops their situation their conditions fix the problems and then attack and and we would not be surprised if it takes months or so but anything is possible if Russia is too desperate they will they will attack with what they have but that attack may totally lead to nowhere uh, now let's uh, look here <laughs> the same nothing new here from this uh, attack local uh, local attack by Ukrainian 128th brigade towards north probably it's got stalled and there is not much really not much to report there uh, then in terms of uh, ta a town of Rubizhne, there was question about it. So Russian, so you see this is Rubizhne here. Russian troops control north of the town and most of the center. And they uh, they don't control kind of southern part of the town that adjusted to uh, Severodonetsk. Basically, it's kind of like you can even see this whole thing is one big one big town, including the Sechansk, which is on the other side of the river. So this is this three towns is kind of like one thing. This is uh, another industrial uh, industrial center. It used to be big industrial center. There was there used to be a oil large oil refinery in the Sechansk, but it got uh, due to poor economic policies by Ukrainian government, uh, it went bankrupt. So it doesn't work right now. But there are still chemical plants here in um, in Rubizhne and then in Severodonetsk. So, and then there is ongoing attacks on, on Severodonetsk from Russia, by Russian troops, because this is bridgehead uh, on the <clears throat> east, uh, eastern bank of uh, Siversky Donetsk. And obviously they want to eliminate, even just from military perspective. Also, this could be big win for uh, for propaganda 
from propaganda perspective because this is lar last large town uh, in Luhansk region that's being controlled by Ukrainian uh, by Ukrainian side. There is ongoing fighting for uh, the town of Popasna. It's about 50% captured by Russian troops. Uh, there is pressure here because this is kind of main road that connects connects Luhansk and Severodonetsk, this, this cities. So this is obvious uh, axis of attack if Russian troops want to uh, you know capture this area. Uh, not much to report here. And then let's keep going. Uh, let's keep going here south. Let's see what's going on west of Donetsk uh, in this area. This is more detailed look at the same what we showed before. And this is a situation uh, east of, uh, uh, sorry, west of Donetsk. Uh, Avdivka is a major, uh, again, point of attack. Uh, no much sort of progress by Russian troops, but they keep attacking it. Uh, the same goes true for Mar Marinka. It's been continuously attacked for a long, long time. They managed to capture about 25% of it for all of this time, and that's they, they essentially stole there. Uh, Russian troops putting pressure here around uh, Novomikhailivka. They're putting pressure on Vuhledar, and they're putting pressure on Velika no Novosilka. But nothing really major to report here. Ukrainian lines are holding here. There's no, no problems here. Uh, then let's look at the uh, Mariupol situation and a little bit here. This is the Parija region. And even though we're going to give you a heads up, there's nothing, nothing changed here. All the same. But let's, let's kind of look at this whole region. So this we discuss here. This Velika Novosilka and Vuhledar. Uh, Vugladar is a one key kind of like stronghold that's very important at this point uh, for Ukrainian, this whole line here to hold. So that's why we discuss it. The same is becoming true for Velika Novosilka here. Um, uh, so otherwise there is no really changes here, not even reports of major any kind of skirmishes or fighting. So relatively quiet here. Well, obviously there is shelling and all of like local fighting, but there is nothing truly major to report. Let's look a little bit at um, uh, Mariupol situation. So what we learned uh, based on reports uh, from uh, Russian side that they captured 70% of the seaport. So obviously, you know, as we expected, eventually the Ukrainian side will lose it because you know uh, the these troops they they you know the the the, the days are uh, numbered unless Ukraine and there is there is a miracle or in Ukraine does relief at them which is in our opinion in, is not possible at this moment so otherwise there is not much major progress on the Russian side they basically try to exploit this um, um uh, this crack in terms of seaport and obviously it's used you know for propaganda purposes as well and so on. Uh, we're also hearing that there are several uh, prominent um, sort of soldiers in uh, Azov uh, died uh, today and yesterday, which also tells us in general that situation is very, like it's intense and very critical for Azov. It's getting very, very difficult for them there. Just, just observation based on, on the deaths of several key people there. Uh, let's now move to situation in this Kherson. Mostly at this point it's Kherson, but we can call it Kherson and Mykolaiv region. So uh, what happened here is uh, position-wise nothing new. We have a viewer um, local, with local connections who confirmed to us that this is actually Snihorivka is not no man's land, but it's Russian bridgehead on the western side of Inhulets River. So uh, so just so we are so our initial assessment was correct, but then we got a little bit hesitant as our sources were not um, let's say uh, not very strong. Let's put this way, but we got another confirmation from the viewer here. Um, in terms of um, overall situation, no major changes. There is only change here at 59th Brigade. So it seems that uh, the commander of the brigade, who was considered to be capable and good quality uh, was dismissed a uh, day or two days ago and he was transferred to Donbass. We don't know exactly what he's going to be doing there, but basically he was dismissed 
and there is a new commander for this brigade. And apparently there was conflict between the head of um, head of the Makalai region. His name is Kim, and this general, uh, his name is uh, Marchenko. So there was apparently conflict which got resolved in the favor of the uh, head of the Mikolai region. We don't know details about this whole situation. All we just know that uh, that seems to be capable of capable general, and uh, he got dismissed. There is also um, potentially, potentially, maybe that's a reaction to this failed attacks as well, because there was expectation that from a political top of in Ukraine, there was expectation that somehow 59th Brigade can make a miracle and retake her son, which is obviously just totally impossible. It's as as they say, pigs don't fly. Um, not in a bad way, but in a good way. That's you know, uh, it's totally not possible. Um, but somehow there was expectation politically. Uh, that there is that that's a possibility and uh, maybe that's why he got dismissed we don't know details we just want to share this news with you so that that's all for today that's thanks for watching and until tomorrow bye bye